Welcome to the Shepherd's Heart. We are so glad that you subscribe, that you listen to this series, this program, The Shepherd's Heart, and we welcome you heartily. My name is Munengi Mulandi, pastor at Narubu Baptist Church, and excited to learn with us these leadership uh, lessons from different leaders that the Lord raised in Israel. The setting is in the book of Judges, where it is said that at that time Israel had no leader. This is before King Saul, King David, King Solomon. They had no leader. And each man did what was right in his own eyes. Can you imagine the multiplicity of wrong decisions from each set of eyes? But when they would be in trouble, they would cry to the Lord in deep repentance. And the Lord would answer them and raise a leader for them, a judge. One such judge was Samson. And we've been looking at uh, Samson in this series, a man that is raised by God, set aside from birth. Even the announcement of his birth was miraculous. And the way the Holy Spirit would come upon him and do great things of strength is also miraculous. But this is a man who had a weakness of a sense of entitlement, taking things for granted, and being generally what the French may call avant-garde, you know, not wanting to be restricted, without rules, without, you know, you know a, a guide, wanting just to be free. And that cost Samson a lot. I don't know if you're familiar with Judges chapter 14 and 15, but his decline begins when he sees this young Philistine woman and makes a demand upon his parents, get me this woman. Then they go to the lady's place, a lot of chaos and, um, you know, his interactions with them and he ends up, um, you know, fighting um, many of them and there's enmity between them and he lives in a scuff. Just read chapter 14 for a few more of the details. But then we're told sometime later, his heart softened and he goes back to this Philistine village to find the lady that he had left. And the Bible says when he got there, he found that this lady had been given to somebody else for marriage. And the parents are like, oh, Samson, we thought you didn't like her. The way you left here in a scarf, the way, you know, you, you attacked these people, uh, you, you know, we, we thought you had no interest in her. And so she was given to your best man, one of the groomsmen that had been allocated to you. But she has a, a, a younger sister, she has a sister who is even more lovely, take her. And Samson is so mad and goes into another battle tirade. Not just verbal, but physical. But the Bible says something that I think is easy to miss. Many times we take Samson's big mistakes and we don't always read carefully to find out where did he go wrong? When did the rain begin beating on Samson? Well, let me take you to an obscure part of the scripture. Judges chapter 15 and verse 1. Later on, at the time of wheat harvest, Samson went down to look for this lady. Later on, during the wheat harvest, harvest. You know, this just reminds me of King David. When, during spring, when kings went to war, King David was at his palace balcony on the roof, and that's where he sees Bathsheba and the beginning of his problems, the Bathsheba Gate scandal, in, that included the killing of Uriah and, you know, the messing up of Bathsheba's life. Similar, Samson, during harvest time, is going to Philistine country. If you know a little about the Holy Land and the culture, during these harvest times is exactly when the festivals were. When people would go either at the beginning of harvest to give their first fruits, you know, uh, or when the full harvest was there 
to give, you know, the, 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 the full sacrifice of thanksgiving for what the Lord had provided through these harvests. It was a time of merrymaking, but in the presence of God. And what does the Nazarite Samson do? What does the judge of the people do? What does the leader appointed by God do at that time? When people are returning thanks to God, when people are going back to say, Oh God, look at the abundance of food that you have supplied for us. Receive our thanks. When people are gathering thanksgiving offerings to give, to wave, to sacrifice to the Lord, Samson is going to enemy territory to the Philistines. For what purpose? To go against God's law and intermarrying with those out of covenant with God. So the mistake was upon a mistake of ignoring the special time that was for going before the Lord. As a leader, I think you and I have a lot to learn. Are we in the, are we finding ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time? We should always be careful to be at the right place at the right time. And just by, by, by doing that, you find yourself safe from all these attacks and all these temptations. Reverend Majid Ocheng and I have worked together for many years. He is the deputy senior pastor here at Narib Baptist Church and a good friend. He is husband to Jane and they have been blessed like me with many sons. But they overtook me and got a daughter. <laughs> it must feel so nice. I just envy you. Uh, uh, but welcome to the Shepherd's Heart. Th th thank you very much. And as, as uh, Reverend Mulandi has said, uh, we've known each other for many years. I is now senior pastor in Nairobi Baptist Church. I think our journey starts way back in 1995. Was I slimmer then? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you can <could> say so. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was just getting out of high school and I'd just gotten born again, and, and I think the person who led me to Christ uh, insinuated to him. So one day after the service, uh, he calls me. And uh, we're going through town. Uh, he takes me out for lunch. Uh, I still remember uh, Moy Avenue, uh, Generation Grill. Grill. Yes, yes. yes. There's uh, a reason why they closed it. <laughs> we had too much fun. Well, yes. So, so thank you very much. May the Lord bless you even as you lead us. And as we talk about uh, the shepherd's heart, yeah. uh, matters leadership. What, what did you think about um, Samson in this particular uh, situation? Give us your comments on that. I think the, the first point that I see is that um, God has a, a gracious heart mm -hmm. and therefore even the people that uh, he calls sometimes yeah. are not always perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, in some places where I preached, normally say God uh, does not necessarily call the qualified, mm -hmm. but he calls, then he qualifies. Uh -huh. And that can be a long journey. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he continues to qualify. Yeah. The weaknesses, they continue to come, yeah. but you still continue to see the grace of God. Mm. At, at the same time, uh, it's just to know that uh, leadership is key. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the words of John Maxwell, mm -hmm. everything falls or rises with leadership. Mm -hmm. Yes. So any, any further comments or questions on this thing about the leader must be at the right place at the right time? And that being um, what gives him insurance against external negative influences. Yes, then probably then the leader to be very keen mm -hmm. and to work out the journey. Uh, and uh, within our circles is to be so much tuned to God. Mm -hmm. So that by God's grace uh, to always know that uh, I am in the place that God wants me to be in. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a... A solo journey. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, takes others to help us walk that journey. 
uh, people that leaders consult with, mm -hmm. uh, people that uh, you know you, you want to go through something and uh, as a leader, you ask them, what do you think of this? What do you hear God uh, telling you about this? Mm. Uh, so, so it's good, but again, just that as we continue in this leadership journey, I suspect probably it's because of some of those reasons that even Samson also mm. actually failed uh, mm. because he did not get to hear the, the advice of, of, of others around mm. him so mm. much, yes. You know, one of the most pleasant memories yes. of our time together is yes. when we both served in the youth. Yes. And this is just before you got married. Yes. You are living in Lovington, you know, <laughs> high <laughs> level uh, <laughs> life, <laughs> Pastor Majid. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was, that was Lovington, you know. Um, and I lived um, in golf course. Yes. And I remember we had this one of our youth yes. who would come to babysit for us. Yes. And I remember you gave me license in, yes. into your life. Yes. Um, and this lady would come and babysit for us. And sometimes, you know, we'd be out of town and she spent two, three nights with our children. Yes. And then my wife, Levina, and I come home and we want to drop her because it's late in the evening. Yes. And I had this boundary about what time I was okay to be able to drop somebody of the opposite gender. Yes. So which meant I would <laughs> leave uh, our house in, in golf course, yes. come and pick you in yes. Lovington. Do you remember that day? Yes, yes. Come back to the house, pick this lady, yes. drop her in South B, yes. and, and then come back, drop you in Lovington, and yes. come back home. And that was a lot of fuel. Well, fuel wasn't 159. Yes. But it helped to put um, being at the right place at the right time. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, again, it calls for sacrifice, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a sacrifice, because by the time you leave golf course uh, to Lovington, to golf course, to South B, <laughs> to Lovington, to golf course, I don't think you're talking of less than one, two hours yeah. uh, on a good day. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is sacrifice uh, that comes with it. Uh, but more than sacrifice also of time, uh, the sacrifice of resources mm -hmm. that comes with it. And that is also part of a leader's journey, that there is a lot of demand that calls for, for sacrifice. But above all, to be in that place of accountability mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, as leaders, we set our bars so that we are uh, not, uh, we are always found to be uh, above uh, mm -hmm. or beyond reproach. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, uh, I have seen it work. Uh, it has worked for you. It has worked for me. Uh, some of those boundaries, so that we, we, we are not a perfect people, but uh, you, you've been in Christian ministries going close to 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, and, and by the grace of God, uh, you have a testimony. Yes. And uh, uh, humbly, I'll also say that I, I have a testimony. But it calls for some of those uh, decisions, sacrifices that we make, that for someone out there, it may look like... Uh, something that is mundane mm -hmm. uh, but some of those key steps of being in the right place at the right time uh, is very key especially in the leadership journey so I will encourage leaders out there mm -hmm. uh, just to be cognizant of that uh, are you in the right place at the right time sometimes with the right people mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so that uh, we continue to serve especially in the Christian circles because one of the things that I've always seen also in the Christian circles is it can take a lifetime to build a reputation. It can take a minute to bring that reputation down. Mm. And you are lucky if you recover. <laughs> if you ever. <laughs> if you'll ever recover. Mm. Uh, because sometimes once it is gone, it mm. is gone. Mm. Uh, so again, uh, just to over, uh, I hope not to overemphasize being in the right place uh, in the right time and with the right people, mm. uh, will help us to be on the narrow road that God wants us to be in, and also to be in the place that God wants us to be in. And, and uh, interesting enough is that it's not now limited to the church leadership. Yeah. I, I think the, the world all over is becoming very conscious mm -hmm. of issues of integrity, mm -hmm. issues of morality mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I see if leaders are not careful, regardless mm -hmm. of which uh, kind of leadership mm. is likely to bring them down. Mm. Yes. L let me ask one last question, if I may. Yes. If, imagine that I'm a corporate leader 
Yes. My background is in banking, so that's all I can think of. Yes. I'm a bank manager somewhere, senior bank manager. Yes. Can you think of any situations where, as a Christian you know, executive, top in the corporate world, where I can be at the wrong place at the wrong time? The way Samson was during harvest time, when he's supposed to be thanking God um, and you know, bringing sacrifices to worship God for this abundant harvest, uh, he's out going to the Philistines mm. and to do a wrong thing mm. to marry a filly. Uh, are there things that you would advise me and our sister, uh, our brother who's watching this, where a corporate banker would be at the wrong time, at, uh, at the wrong place at the wrong yeah, time, time, and like you've added with the wrong people? Does any yeah. thing come to mind? Uh -huh. uh, it's okay because as leaders, uh, we, we are likely to work late. Yeah. Uh, and it's okay, absolutely okay to work late. But always uh, to be very careful that when I'm working late mm -hmm. in an office that uh, perhaps my colleague or mm -hmm. the person that I work closely with is a lady, mm -hmm. then when I'm working late, then they are also working late. Mm -hmm. That brings a compromising situation. So that's one of the situations. I mm -hmm. think in the, in the corporate world, there are we there are celebrations also that happen mm -hmm. and parties that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes they are out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, in that scenario, even when we go out of town mm -hmm. uh, and you have a room uh, mm -hmm. somewhere there. And, uh, and, who, who, and I'm a bank manager of a bank that is sponsoring the rally in Vasha. Exactly, exactly. You, you have to be very careful so that uh, you are not found in a compromising situation, for example, if, if, if you are a Christian and you hold highly the values of God, mm. uh, someone of the opposite gender should not <laughs> have access to your room mm -hmm. when you are outside there. Mm. So some of those things are, are, are very key. Uh, because, uh, again, leadership is, when, when God gives you a place of authority, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it may not show, but it has a very, very uh, high tendency or potential mm -hmm. of uh, people looking up to you and without knowing, uh, people submitting to you and without knowing, uh, people wanting always to do wonderful things for you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, in that situation can be a very, very compromising mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, we, we, you may mean well, but we need to be meaning well with the boundaries uh, mm -hmm. that are set. And the best time to set the boundaries normally is not when you're in the middle of things. Mm -hmm. uh, set them way before. Yes. Uh, way before so that uh, we don't find ourselves in the thick of things. Wow. Yes. Thank you very much. Asante. The shepherd's heart. Thank you.